so it makes it hard for me to really care what's going on in the main plot. Welcome back to the Bucket Think Tank for Young Justice Issue 5. So our story opens up with what we can only guess is Young Justice truly together. You know, Jenny Hex, Robin, Impulse, Wonder Girl, Superboy, the Teen Lantern, and Amethyst still debating whether or not she should be here. And they're all trying to figure out what to do as we get two splash pages of the team. And then they're met by the Dark Lord Opal, who... I still don't get if I'm supposed to care about this guy. I mean, granted, he's got kryptonite now, so, you know, he's ready. But we kind of already knew he was ready because he knew about the problem of, you know, apparently Earth being the, being the cause of all these different crisis events. And he knew that Superboy was, you know, half Kryptonian. So what's the shock here? I mean, Tim Drake is freaked out. So, yeah. But before we can figure out anything, let's have a f to the Hall of Justice two days ago, like every other story. And it's just Stephanie Brown and Tim Drake making out. And they look so much younger. And it's kind of adorable, kind of sweet. And Stephanie points out, hey, you know, we told everybody that, you know, you know, you were going to college. But in reality, what we're doing was figuring out what was with all these different realities and timelines where, you know, you become Batman. I'm Batgirl at one point, you know, you know, I'm a Robin at one point, you know, all the all the fun little continuity that happened before Barry Allen went back in time to try to save his mom. And then it turned out it was also due to something Dark Manhattan did. But, you know, here we are now. Everyone's happy and whatnot. But then Stephanie gets a call. And it's her dad, the Clue Master. And he wants to... See. So we don't quite know exactly what Steph's going to do. She does love her dad to an extent. But, you know, he's also a, a supervillain. Put quotations around supervillain. Bare minimum, he's a criminal in Gotham City. So before they can resolve this, Zatanna shows up, and it turns out Tim Drake has called Zatanna, and you know he she, he needs her help to figure out exactly what's been going on with their mind. You know, have someone tampered with them? Has has their timeline been changed? Personally, they don't know. So Zatanna decides, okay, well I'll read your mind and figure out whether or not there's some, been some magic, there's some you know chemical agents, or something else that's in this wonderful DC universe. So they picked it up. So she taps in his head in a very Doctor Who sort of way. And Tim Drake says Connor, and he gets a flash of the original Young Justice, presumably. But how this all fits in is still a mystery. Points to Bendis, though, for remembering that this was something Tim and Steph were doing. They're like, okay, so there was a team that Tim was on. So what now? So before we can find that out, we cut back to the present, to another bit of nothing, of a little back and forth, where Tim's asking... Why do you have kryptonite and what's all this? And still nothing. Impulse does a thing where he tries to steal the kryptonite. Nothing really happens. But, you know, they beat up the Dark Lord Opal. The Dark Lord Opal fights back. And then we cut back to the past again, two days earlier, where they talk, where Tim reveals, yeah, I was part of a team called Young Justice. You were part of it too. And, you know, there was a Superboy. His name was Connor, not John. What is this? So I'm going to go find Superman. He's in Metropolis, but no one's seen him. So Metropolis might be the only place I can start. And Steph wants to go talk to her dad. So they agree, like, you know, well, let's let's split up for a bit. You know, let's, you know, we'll be back. We'll be back in two to three days. And Steph says that, you know, she loves Tim Drake. Tim doesn't say anything, but then he goes, like, I'm mad in love with you, Steph. It was just... And he was just about to tell her that, and that he was really happy. She was in his repressed memories, and then she kisses him, and it's sweet and wonderful. And they promise to meet up in two to three days, and that's how the comic ends. So points to Bendis for not splitting up Tim and Steph. Points to that. More points for remembering why Tim and Steph were gone in the first place. And um, points taken for not being able to keep me invested in this actual story. Again, why... Why are we telling the story this way? Like, should I care about the Dark Lord? Why do I care about Gem World? At no point has Bendis given me a reason to care about this. I care about these characters, some of them, but for the most part, that's it. Well, with that in mind, what do you guys think as we bring this video to close here? Is this story really worth it, or are we really just here to find out how everyone else got here? I thought the Teen Lantern would have been next. But if you're new to this, if you're new to this channel, feel free to like, comment, share, subscribe. If you enjoyed this video, like it. If you didn't like it, like it anyway. Be a fan, be a friend, and I will catch you all later. This is the Buck Think Tank signing off. Thanks for watching, and may your fandom serve you well.